morning to you ladies, my name is Jacksepticeye, and it is currently 4.57 a.m. Everything is all topsy-turvy. This is the latest I've actually been up in a really long time, because I just got back from L.A. I got back today, I was gone for a week. I did make a vlog about it before I went, talking about some of the things that were going on. I was tweeting about it, I was Instagramming some pictures from where I was, but if you didn't know, I was gone for an entire week. I went from Wednesday to Wednesday, I just got back today, today well today's Thursday, but you lose a day coming back because fucking time zones. Which is really annoying, and I got back and I just went straight to bed and fell asleep for hours and hours. I wasn't supposed to fall asleep for so long, so now everything's kind of backwards. I recorded Dream Daddy, um, a little while ago, and <laughs> it's just, everything's all a fucking mess. But, I'm back! Um, that was probably one of the craziest weeks I've had in a long time. It was so goddamn busy. I, I initially went over there to do the D23 event. Which was an absolute blast. That was so, so cool. If you, if you didn't watch the vlog before the D23 event, they were hosting a gaming side of things where they were announcing some of the Disney, Marvel, uh, Square Enix, anything that Disney were like, it, anything that Disney owned IP-wise, they were showing off some games there. Switch. So we got to show off Star Wars Battlefront 2, uh, Spider-Man that's coming out for the PS4 that Insomniac are making, and Kingdom Hearts 3, which went down so incredibly well. I did not expect that kind of reaction from people. So those are the big three that the whole event was around. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna break things down because I like to just get my thoughts out, and I also like showing you guys what it's like to do these kinds of things and try and bring you along as much as possible because I can't always record these things. But when when I went to LA, I, I arrived on the Wednesday. I had nothing going on that day, but Thursday and Friday were all rehearsal days, and I didn't know that something like this needed that much rehearsal because it was an hour long stream. I've done like the South by Southwest awards before, and that didn't even have as much rehearsals for it. And that was a way bigger event, um, time wise, and there was more of a script involved in that. This one was just like cue cards, and you had like little teleprompter like prompts for questions and things like that. Um, so we went in on the the Thursday. I, I got to go to the Disney Studios, and we sat down, and we went through the run of events of what was going to happen. And I felt so. Freaking giddy because I got to see some of the trailers for things before they actually went public I got to see like the new spider-man like behind the scenes stuff I actually got to talk to the people who are making the game I got to find out some stuff that the public doesn't even know yet, which I felt very very honored for I I can't say it obviously because That would be horrible for the developers and I would get in a lot of trouble for it But I felt so privy to all this information because I didn't go there as like a media person I'm not there as a journalist. I'm not there. I was there as a host but I was learning all this stuff just as like a fan of the games, which was so freaking cool. And I got to see like the Kingdom Hearts trailer, the reveal of the Toy Story Pixar collaboration between them for it. And like I was sitting there just like beaming eye to eye, grin, big giant grin on my face, getting to look at this. But at the same time, we were there to do a job and to sit down and actually learn the run of events. And we had questions that we were supposed to ask and then we went and we did rehearsals again on Friday. We actually had to go to Anaheim to the convention center and I had to stay there that night because that was all day that was rehearsals. I, I was doing that for about eight, eight hours, I'd say. We went in and we did a table read with some of the other developers for Star Wars and some of the people from Kingdom Hearts and we went down through the actual run of show. We set out the questions, we acted it all out, and we got everything in place, and everything was really good, everything was feeling fine. It was kind of like pulling teeth for a while, because there was some stuff that had to be added in. I had known all the questions, I, I was reading my cards, and I knew the stuff, and then everything was changed around. But that's why we were there. It was actually a lot of fun to be there, to iron out all the, the different problems with it, and to try and figure out, okay, that should go here, and ask certain questions and really just hone in on what we had to do. And then we went for dinner, then we came back and we did the stage rehearsals, so we actually did a proper dry run of the show on the stage, with the trailer showing up so we could get a feeling for the time of it. That was a fucking blast. Um, because there was enough room to dick around in it a small bit, but also do the show for itself. And then we went back, there was some stuff that went a bit wonky in the show, the transitions weren't as refined, some of the people who were supposed to show up weren't there for the dry run, so we had to kind of make do. So we went back and until like 1am then we were just sitting down and we were hammering stuff out and it like a lot of people in that room were very tired and very worn out and were very like oh god can we just get this over it but I, I love that shit. I love getting in. I love working. I love figuring out how you make a project work and we were just sitting down and like hammering out the questions, we realized that some questions lingered a bit too long. We had to cut out certain questions. We had to figure out how how things ran. We went through it again. 
just like acting out the questions and everything just to make sure we had the timing of everything down and I love that that was so much fun to do it doesn't sound like fun to some people and some people in there were like really really tired really just didn't want to be there but I just had a blast doing that that was so much fun and then the next day was the actual show itself on the Saturday and it went so well there was some stuff, like, even the night before that was still like, oh, I don't know. And we were getting questions right then and there before we went up. And I didn't think that it was going to go well at all. And we had a surprise with John Boyega showing up. I got a fucking hug, John Boyega. How freaking cool is that? That's so nuts. Um, that was a surprise that was supposed to be happening. We threw it to, like, a, a, a live stream and John was supposed to come out. And... I wasn't nervous for the actual show itself, I had a bit of anxiety just to like, I knew something had to happen, like the timing there. I just wanted to get out and do it, I was just a ball of energy, and I was so ready for it. And then the dude two minutes before came up and he was like, just so you know, we don't know if John's actually gonna show up, he's on his way here. But just looked at the teleprompter and we'll let you know. And I had never looked at the teleprompter because we had cue cards. And I was going over them and I, I knew those inside out, this was my jam, I had, I had it down. And then this dude came up and threw me a curveball, and then I started to panic, I started to get like sweaty palms, my heart was pounding. Like 20-30 seconds later, then he came up and he was like, John's here by the way, we're good. I was like, dude, why the fuck did you do that to me? I got so scared. But the show itself went beautifully, went so smoothly, I was so happy with it. There was a little cringe here and there, that happens with these things. A lot of people were like, oh god Jack, that's so cringy, I can't believe you had to say that, but... That's what these live hosting events are. There's a little bit of cringe there, there's a little bit of awkwardness there, but it's just the nature of the beast. Sometimes they don't go perfectly. We didn't meet some of the people, um, like Nomura-san, when he came up to show off Kingdom Hearts 3. We didn't actually meet him until, like, the run of show. So, we met him for rehearsals the day before, but we didn't actually get to talk to him, and all the questions changed by the time the actual event came up, so some of it was a bit awkward, but if you had seen the rehearsals, you would be flabbergasted how that show went that smoothly on the day. And I'm so proud of not only myself for being able to do it, I'm, I'm proud of, because I co-hosted it with um, Megan, Strawberry17, on YouTube. And I'm so proud of her, we worked so well together, we hung out before that at dinner to try and get to know each other a bit better, and I think that it went very, very smoothly between us. Um, she was so nice, she was so encouraging, and she, you could tell she had done this a lot, so she was very helpful in, like, coming to me and letting me know some of the tricks of the trade and helping me overcome some of my, sort of, stage frights. Um, so, thanks to her, she was, she was an absolute star. But just, I cannot get over how much everybody behind the scenes worked on this. They worked so hard, and I'm so thankful for them as well, because anytime I had questions, concerns, um, they had all the cards printed out anytime we wrote notes on them to come back to them They just reprinted them all and had them all then and there all the transitions went perfectly They work so hard, and I'm so grateful for, for them And I just want to say thank you to everybody behind the scenes who work so hard on it because they don't often get thanked It's always like the people who were on stage who were like that went really well good job but no, good job to all of them, because they made everything we had to do so much easier. And they, any time that I had to sit down and, like, really wanted to run through things again, they were more than willing to do so. I think it helped for them to go through things as well. So, it all just went really, really well. And I'm so incredibly happy that I took that opportunity to do that. Because I want to get better at stage presence. I want to get better at doing events like this. And normally I turn down events like this because I think, Oh god, I have to do my own videos, I don't know if I have the time to go there and dedicate to this type of thing. So I'm just glad that I took this by the horns and fucking nailed it. I'm so proud of myself, I'm so proud of everybody involved. So thankful for them. It went really, really well. A really great event. And so many people tuned in. The Kingdom Hearts reveal was so amazing. I did not expect that kind of reaction, because, um, uh, a guy from Disney came out beforehand, and he, Jimmy, he came out and he talked about it, and he was going down through, he was like, we have Star Wars, and we have Spider-Man, and then he said, we have Kingdom Hearts, and the fucking crowd erupted. And then when the Kingdom Hearts showcase came on, like, you can't hear it on the live stream, on the recorded version of it when it comes back, but people were losing their shit in all of that trailer. And me and Megan on stage, we were just sitting there and I was like so giddy and I, I fucking teared up just seeing people's reaction to the Toy Story reveal because, man, video games are just so cool. You always see stuff like that at E3, and I've never been to an event like that where they showed off games for the first time or showed off new trailers or anything. So to see that reaction in that room, legitimately teared up. I got so emotional, like, looking at that. I didn't have anything to do with the game. 
It's just like being in that space, being on that stage at that moment, and being so engrossed in video games, and just realizing that I get to do such cool shit like this just really overwhelmed me, and I'm I'm so grateful. But beyond that, I was also in LA for some other stuff. Uh, it was a surprise on or like right until that day that I was on the Grumps LA live show. They were doing a bunch of shows around America, and it coincided with me going over there. So at the end of our trip. We did a Game Grumps live show with them, and I was on stage with Danny and Aaron for the whole show. It was a three-man show, they normally do it together. And I'm so honored that I got to be part of that. That was one of the coolest experiences I've ever had. Because I've done panels, I've done, like, the South by Southwest show, and I did the D23 one, but I have never experienced anything like the Game Grumps live show. That was such a hungry, energetic, and absolutely outstanding audience. I. I've never seen anything like that. They were so loud, so ready, and so just loving. They were just feeding so much energy to the stage, and I just loved that. I had a big smile on my face throughout that entire show. Um, so thank you to anybody who showed up for that show. I know most of you showed up for the Game Grumps. I was just really fucking happy to be a part of that. And I'm so thankful to, for those guys for taking me under their wing and letting me be part of that and teaching me so much. Because those guys, they have so much love to give. They just exude positivity and motivation and inspiration. Not only were they so nice to me, but they're so fucking nice to each other all the time. Uh, Vernon is doing was doing Dream Daddy at the time. It's out now. I've recorded an episode of it. I don't know when this video is going up. And they were so encouraging to him to let him do that project. Ross is doing his Gameoverse project. Danny and Brian are doing Ninja Sex Party. It's just this really great hub of awesome people who are so talented and so loving and caring of each other and they build each other up all the time. I, I can't tell you how much that meant to me to just be there in that atmosphere for a couple of hours because when you do YouTube and I'm kind of isolated from a lot of people, I have Felix and PJ and people like that in town who do YouTube as well, but when, you when you're on YouTube and you're doing it on your own as like, it's like the Jacksepticeye channel, whatever. It's it's very easy to fall prey to the to the cynicism and the pen pessimism. And everyone kind of just, like, YouTube these days is kind of everyone out for each other. Everyone's at each other's throats. Everyone's trying to one-up each other. And it's so competitive. And I, I really hate that, because when I started off doing YouTube, everything was so supportive. And even... Like, <laughs> I won a PewDiePie shout-out competition, like, to show the type of atmosphere that it was around at that time, back when I had 2,000 subscribers. Everyone was just so loving and caring and collabing with each other, and it wasn't a case of collabing with each other to try and get views off each other, or to write each other's fame. It was just collabing to be friends, and to make cool shit together. And I feel like a lot of that is lost on YouTube these days, so to be around the grumps who are just the complete opposite of that really inspired me and really gave me this, like, THIRST to try and do cool things, and I do have a lot more in the works. And I did get to go to the Disney offices, and we- I sat down with a bunch of people and talked about a bunch of projects as well that I'm really, really excited for, so... I'm hungrier than I've ever been doing YouTube. It was- it was an insanely busy week. Um... We did so much- it felt like I was there for a month. Uh, but just coming away from that, I'm so inspired, I'm so motivated, I'm so ready to do a lot more. I mean, it's 5 a.m. and I'm sitting here still trying to make videos because I just- I fucking love this. I love YouTube and I think from, like, mid last year to some of the start of this year, I got very complacent and very burnt out on everything because I was so focused on my schedule. I was fo so focused on just doing the two videos every day that I- I didn't take the chances beyond that. And I know to some people they're gonna say that that's- selfish or whatever, but I know there's a lot more people out there that fully support that type of thing. Because I think I need to spread my wings. I think I need to do more stuff outside of YouTube. Not to say that I'm doing it on my own. I'm still definitely bringing you along on this journey. I just feel like that I need- there's so much potential in me and there's so much potential and so many opportunities out there that I need to grasp them while I can. The D23 event being one of those that normally I would have just turned away because I'd be too- worried about my schedule, or too worried about doing too many events like that, and people perceiving me as too business-like, or... I don't know, I was so fucking inside my own head about these things, that... I didn't realize that, by now, I've done YouTube for so long. I've put so much of my personality and so much of my passion into my videos, that people know me by now. People know how... 
genuine I try to be, how transparent and how truthful I try to be, and that I'm not egotistical, I'm not narcissistic, I, I try to be as humble as possible about all of this stuff, that doing these events shouldn't change that. Some people out there are gonna ov obviously be like, oh, Jack's like, he's changing or whatever, That that's gonna happen anyway, and I need to just put that out of my head and just embrace these new opportunities and to do you guys proud. And I feel like there were so many people out there after the the hosting event that sent me so many well wishes that said that I did a great job and that they were they were really proud of me and I just it it filled my heart. I was so emotional that day and I was so filled with happiness and joy and you I can't put it into words. And I'm so glad I did it and thank you for being there and coming along on this journey with me. I do hope I'm trying to do opportunities that make sense. I'm not going to do anything that completely sells out and goes against the morals of the channel. I'm going to keep that fucking pillar strong. And I'm going to do the best I can within that. That doesn't mean that I can't take opportunities, but to take the ones that make the most sense towards the channel and towards my morals and for you guys and stuff that's cool to watch, stuff that's cool to, to see and be a part of. Um, so I don't know. I'm motivated. I'm ready. I'm hungry. I, I'm good to go. I can't fucking wait. I have a lot of stuff that was already planned that I'm really excited for, but there's also some other stuff that I've thought up of on that trip that I want to try and do as well. So stuff is coming. I'm sorry this video is so long, but there's a lot of there's a lot of thoughts that I want to get out as well. It's just a really, really great trip. Something that was so stressful to prepare for turned into something that was insanely busy. Like I was going all the time that turned into something that has motivated me beyond many other trips that I've done, so... It's exciting. Anyway, um, there's probably some other stuff that I wanted to say that I'd forget, and then later on I'd be like, shit, why didn't I put that into the vlog? I'm gonna leave it here, because I've been rambling way too much. Thank you to all the Disney people out there who let me do such a cool event and be part of, like, I, like talking to Spider-Man people, getting to see some of the game, getting to, like, show off some Kingdom Hearts stuff and be on that stage with so many like, really fucking great people who are so passionate about their work and getting to show it off to the people and help them show their projects to the public. Also, thanks to all the people behind the scenes who worked so hard to make that event an absolute breeze and to help me through any of the, like, awkwardness that I was feeling and... Because that was only my second ever hosting event. So I was really worried about it and I was really nervous about it, but they, they helped me a lot. Um, and made me feel like I really knew the material, so that was really nice, so thank you to them. Thank you to the Grumps, who were so gracious and let me be part of their live show, and to share- because it was the Grumps' fifth anniversary, that day, so to be part of that actual event, it meant more to me than I can put into words. And I'm so thankful f to them, again, as I said, for taking me under the wing and giving me so much wisdom, and for teaching me so much, and for helping me, um, like, come to- come to terms with some of my own projects and to give me some ideas and some motivation and to just hear them talk about their projects and reaffirm what YouTube should be. That you can go beyond your own channel and you can do really crazy cool projects but you can still keep that core alive of just making cool shit for people. And that's what I've always tried to do for YouTube is to make content for you guys. And I want to keep trying to do that as much as I possibly can, so... Exciting year! The start of this year didn't start off great. Um, mid last year to the first half of this year wasn't the best year. Um, but I think the end of this year is gonna be fucking nuts and I'm so hyped for it. So, be prepared for that. Thank you guys for being here amidst all of this. Thank you guys for putting up with me and for coming along on this crazy, mad journey that we're all part of. And I hope that we can continue doing it for years to come. I'm so grateful. I'm so honored that I get to do this, and I'm so flattered that I get to be asked to do certain things. Anyway, whatever. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, punch that like button in the face! Like a boss! And I face all around. Whoosh! Whoosh! But thank you guys, and I will see all you dudes in the next video! I'm happy. I'm so fucking happy. <laughs>